Hello, I'm Senator Barbara Boxer, and I'm chairman of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. I wanted to take this opportunity to express my strong support for advancing the international effort to address a serious threat to our planet, climate change. We know we must take action, and we must make progress now. And why? Because climate change is real, human activities are the primary cause, the warming planet poses a significant risk to our health and the safety of all our people and all our nations. I want to send a clear message to the conference that there are leaders in Congress who understand the urgent threat facing the globe, and we are dedicated to preventing the terrible impacts of unchecked climate change. I want to give you a little bit of good news. Reports say that last year the United States was one of two countries among the top ten emitters where carbon pollution actually has been reduced. And during President Obama's first term, the United States has taken a number of steps to reduce carbon pollution. We established new automobile efficiency standards that will reduce carbon pollution by over 6 billion tons, while saving consumers $1.7 trillion in fuel costs over the life of these vehicles. The GSA, that's the agency that oversees office space for more than a million federal employees and 9,600 federal buildings and leases, has reduced energy consumption by more than 16 percent over 2003 levels. And then the Clean Air Act, it's being enforced and we've fought efforts to weaken it and emissions of many pollutants are being reduced and that includes carbon pollution. Important steps forward have also been taken on the state level. I'm so proud of my own state of California, which is continuing to lead the nation in efforts to control carbon pollution. On January 1, 2012, California launched an enforceable cap and trade program. We are on course to reduce carbon by nearly 17 percent by 2020. That is, America is on course to do that. On the eve of his second term, President Obama reaffirmed his commitment to addressing climate change. This is what he said, quote, I am a firm believer that climate change is real, that it's impacted by human behavior and carbon emissions, and as a consequence, I think we've got an obligation to future generations to do something about it, unquote. I agree and I strongly support the President's call to action and believe we must work together to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. We can't turn away from this challenge because we've seen the devastation, the, the terrible impact of extreme weather events that scientists predict will become more frequent. Several weeks ago, Superstorm Sandy gave us a preview of what to expect if climate change is not addressed. That storm caused tremendous destruction along the United States' east coast, and it ranks as one of the worst natural disasters to ever hit America. Stretching from Maine to the Gulf Coast states, Sandy brought a life-threatening storm surge along the mid-Atlantic coast and areas northward. The massive storm's maximum sustained winds were 90 miles an hour with hurricane force winds extending outward approximately 175 miles from the center and tropical storm winds extending outward approximately 485 miles. Just last week, I held a hearing in my committee on Superstorm Sandy, and I heard from members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats, who witnessed firsthand the devastation in their communities. More than 120 people died in the storm, and we heard moving testimony from senators and congressmen who met with the relatives of those who lost their lives. We know it's going to be a long road back from that one terrible storm. The initial estimates for New York and New Jersey for disaster aid total more than $70 billion. Following the storm, the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, rightly stated, and I quote, part of learning from this is the recognition that climate change is a reality. Extreme weather is a reality. It is a reality that we are vulnerable, unquote. I believe Sandy will mark a turning point in our approach to climate change. Some people may choose to close their eyes, but anyone with a heartbeat and a pulse could see that things are changing for the worse, and we simply cannot afford to ignore these warnings. Sandy was a single devastating storm, but scientists tell us that these destructive events will only get worse in the future 
if carbon pollution continues to increase. I believe that those of us in the U.S. who are dedicated to addressing climate change are growing in numbers. In the next Congress, we have added new senators who share a strong commitment to act on climate change. We will take every opportunity to make progress in tackling the serious global threat. So the work you're doing in Doha is an important step toward developing a plan to address this threat of climate change. And I wish you the very best as you enter into final negotiations. I am an optimistic person, and I believe we can rise to this challenge. Thanks so much.